Area Diesel Service has uh, shipped us a whole bunch of goodies, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Including this big old turbo. Yeah, that's the best part. Where have you been? Yo! Is that what your turbo's gonna sound like? <laughs> not my turbo. Well, boys, we got big problems here. Uh-oh. The turbo is not gonna fit. Welcome back to CNC Equipment's YouTube channel. We've uh, got something epic going on today, don't we? A little change of events. What is this thing in the background back here? A red truck? We'll get to that in a second. Um, so if you guys have been following along, we yanked this 12 valve motor out of a uh, 92 Dodge truck a while back. And uh, Tucker is wanting to build the ultimate super reliable tow rig truck. In the last video, we showed you this white truck. So our plan was to use this super sweet 97 F350 we got out of California. It's completely rust free and everything. And convert it and put the Cummins and stuff in it. But plans changed a little. So we come across this super sweet deal in this 95 F350 crew cab dually. It's uh, been a grandpa truck for sure. Plan is, I guess we're going to drop the Cummins in there. Is that right? We're going to drop the Cummins in there and uh turned into four-wheel drive you guys might notice it's two-wheel drive right now so that's all going to be in a video on down the way isn't it mm -hmm. it's a very nice truck for sure we'll show you more on that in the next video so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out but uh today we're going to be putting this uh cummins 12 valve back together uh, if you watched the first video we uh took the whole thing apart um Cylinders look awesome. We pulled a rod main bearing out. They looked awesome. I think I had like 138,000 miles on it. No need to change any of that stuff. So we're just going to leave well enough alone. Thing was running excellent. Tucker spent a lot of time uh, cleaning this thing up. It's got the head apart, all the valves out of it. Uh, we throw all the stuff in our parts washer. Got everything cleaned up, looking pretty. Um, I got a bunch of new parts to go back in it. So basically we're resealing it. Um, we're going to put head studs in it. Just in case somebody gets carried away with boost. I don't think we're going to be doing anything like that, but got a head stud kit. Um, complete out of frame gasket kit going in here. We got a few parts from uh, Power Driven Diesel. We're not sponsored by them, but they sent some 60 pound valve springs, so I'm going to stick those in the head. Uh, we did partner up with uh, Area Diesel Service. You guys see their sign up in the wall up there. Um, they are working on our injection pump. You guys watched the last video, we sent it off. Uh, they're getting us a turbo, new set of injectors to hopefully hop this thing up. So we're looking for a nice, reliable, working man's tow rig, right? And I hear we've got a name for the truck already? Your girlfriend named it? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. So this thing, I can't be showing it all the way. I love the 90s red interior. I like, I like it. Truck is super clean, but you can see it's red on red on red. A lot of people red. probably won't like it, but I like it. It's cool. More on the truck next video. Anyway, we're going to get to it here. Probably going to do the front and rear seals. We're going to put the camshaft back in it. Uh, we did get some new lifters. You guys watched the uh, last video. Some of these had a little bit of pitting in them. So we should have some new lifters over here somewhere. Um, if you guys need any engine parts, we are a dealer for Reliance Power Parts. I've used quite a few of those kits in the uh, John Deere 850s and stuff. So, you guys know what you need. You can get on their website and get part number stuff. We are a dealer. We can sell you stuff like that. So, they're kind of big in John Deere stuff. Um, Cummins, you need your CPL number. I think it's customer's part list. And we can get stuff that way. So, but, uh, we're ready to get after it. All right, put a new seal on here. We're using uh, Loctite 515 anaerobic sealer on everything. Just going to seal one side of the gasket. I don't know what the book says to do, too. The seal has a silicone 
on one side of it. I'll put it towards the engine block. I always like to put sealant on the side that might warp the most, which could be this aluminum. In this case, we're going up against a steel flat cast on the engine, so hopefully it's not warped. Same thing, we put a pan and stuff on. I'll put the sealant on the pan side and uh, where the pan goes against that engine block. In theory, it should be nice and flat. So you guys see this little white sleeve. It's an installation sleeve. It's going to slide over that and it'll pop off once we slide this uh, rear seal cover on. Just kind of getting that seal installer on there right now. Just push it on there. I've never seen that. So this is a double lip seal. So you got to seal this way and that way. And that goes on there and keeps them. So you got to seal lip that way. If you tried to push it on, it'd roll under. Yeah. See, it keeps them lined up that way. So. Tucker's going to get the bolts in there, we'll get those torqued down, and then we'll move to the front cover. Alright, getting ready to put the front cover on. If you guys remember from the uh, last video, this is what they call the killer dowel pin. It actually fell out, was laying in the bottom of the engine. It goes uh, in the engine block right here, and when it come out of this hole right here, it banged around, hit that cover a few times. So luckily it did not hit any of the gears or do any damage. Um, we did get what they call a killer dowel pin repair kit from Power Driven Diesel. Um, we've got a new dowel pin here and there's actually a keeper that will install in the timing cover and keep it in there. So Tucker's gonna go ahead and uh, install this one in right here. Tap it in with your brass hammer a little bit. Should be it. So that's gonna line up this aluminum cover. There's another one back here, but it's encased in the cover. So what happens, that motor will sit there and vibrate and rattle. Eventually that falls out. So I'd never seen it happen. I knew about it, but uh, luckily it didn't tear anything up. So we're going to get a gasket put on there and drop that uh, timing cover on. All right, getting our bolts and our inner cover. That's that killer dowel pin that fell out. You guys can kind of see how that would just rattle out after a while. Tucker's putting on a uh, little retainer. Is that, I think the bolt is the head of it too. Let me see. Oh, it's hitting there. Yeah. Yeah, we may have to use a different bolt. It's hitting that shoulder right there. But you guys get the idea there. That's going to keep that from falling out next time. All right, torquing all the inside bolts. You guys might notice we have these bolts in here just to make sure the gasket and everything's lined up good. Maybe I come off when we put the outside cover on. I leave these gaskets long. We'll cut those off with a razor blade when we set the uh, oil pan on there. Next, I think we're going to put in an oil pump. We got a brand new oil pump, and then we're going to put those lifters in and the camshaft. So. All right, getting ready to drop the oil pump in here. We put some oil in it, kind of lubed it up. This is a brand new one. Put some oil on the gears here too. You want to drop it in, Tucker? Do you need oil on it? I already got oil. It's waiting on you. What kind of oil is on you? Uh, we're all purple. That's why it's purple. <coughs> Bolts are right there. Most torque to 18 foot pounds, also. I believe they're a 13 millimeter socket. All right, Tucker's getting the new lifters unwrapped. We're going to clean them up, get them lubed up with some assembly lube, and drop them in there. We got the engine turned upside down. We're going to drop them down there in those holes right down there, if you guys can see. And uh, 
Then we'll get the engine on number one top dead center. Make sure timing marks are right. And while the engine's upside down, all those lifters are going to be hanging down. We'll slide the camshaft in there. Then once we do that, we won't have to worry about the lifters falling out. So, all right, got the last lifter going in. Tucker's dropping them in there with a magnet. There you go. 12 lifters. Okay, Tucker's getting the cam lubed up. This is the stuff we're using. It's just what I use. It's a real sticky oil. I even put a little bit on the gears just to protect it during startup. Then we'll get that slid in the block. All right, got her slid in there right to the point where we got to get her teeth lined up here. Is it not the other mark? The white mark? The white, white mark. mark. You better watch me, bud. Yeah. We got to line the OO up with the OO. We'll verify that with the pictures we took. I think that's it. Okay, picture. We'll look at her pictures. We took pictures on this before we took it apart. Um, cam retainer plate may have to go in there before we push that all the way in it goes in and holds it in I think it's got a slip in there you need me to pull it back out some don't you you gotta slide that I take your bolts out first the, cam the letters go out it doesn't matter yeah you can see that word mark where the cam was sitting it goes like that but yeah it's made the same way I need to slide it up through there I think so Maybe, maybe not. Okay, you got your fingers out of the way? Kinda, not really. There go in easy. Dear, it shouldn't fall out now. There's your bolts. Torque those, it wouldn't surprise me if those torqued 18 foot pounds too, but I'll look them up in the uh, book over here. And we'll get them torqued down. All right, Tucker got the uh, extra gasket cut off with the razor blade. Uh, using a little bit of silicone to transition that area from the uh, cast block to this aluminum adapter. Same thing over here. We'll put a little silicone on both. And then uh, we'll put Loctite 515 on the oil pan gasket on this side here. And then we'll get her set on there. What do you think? You got her ready? Yeah, I was just going to have to line up. So. We'll start getting some bolts in there and get her lined up. I got that all ready for you over there, bud. Don't put your finger in the stuff. Try not to. For the most part. Should be good. All right, we gotta get the ten. Ga the gasket is humped up. Right? Yeah, ten thousand bolts, and we'll get her in there. All right, so he's getting ready to put uh, new valve stem seals in the head here. If you guys don't know, there's a seal that goes around the valve stem. This was the old ones that come out of this style head. They basically just went on like that. Um, a good stock seal and everything. This new kit that we got come with these, what they call a top hat seal. And I guess they used these on the later ones. But uh, these will not fit on here, unfortunately. So uh, the reason is this shoulder is too big by about 95 thousandths of an inch. I uh, got the internet looking. Um, they say these are better for high, higher boost applications because the spring's actually holding that down so it can't blow up. These can apparently blow up. Uh, it's actually Sunday here, so we can't get, we can get some of these seals in a couple days here, but, uh, we're going to take the risk of blowing them off. I guess they make these style seals that's a little bit bigger here that will go over that. Uh, the other option is you have to machine this out. Um, I think that's what we're going to attempt to do. We're going to take an annular cutter. It's got a hole in it. We'll put this thing in the mill here and we're just going to mill that flat down uh, so we can put this uh, style uh, retainer on there. So it'll look more like the later head. So anyway, 
that's what we got going on that way we don't have to wait a couple days for parts to come in um, and it's not going to hurt anything it's actually going to be a better deal in the process so i thought well they gave us the wrong seals and i got to looking on the internet and they make two different styles this is a later style this is going to be better for what we're doing so tucker's over cleaning the mill off we'll get all set up and we'll bring you guys back in all right we've been hard at it actually cut all these seats here off camera got one more left we got them all looking good tucker made this super sweet yeah. adapter so this fits up inside our annular cutter and then it's got the same diameter as the valve stem there it helps us line up the holes like that so we should be good got a stop set there get that back out of the way we're turning about 340 rpm this is just cast steel here so we'll set you guys up here and uh, we'll cut one out All right, there you go. We got them all cut, all the steps are cut. We're gonna blow this off. We're gonna throw it in the uh, wash tank one more time and uh, then maybe we can put it together. Maybe. All right, got it in there. Water's heated up to 144 degrees already. Ready to let her rip. All right, while that's washing, we're gonna go ahead and put uh, a new oil cooler in uh, the old one is still working fine but we'll go ahead and put a new one in those things don't last forever it goes in the side of the block oil filters right there it's going to bolt in there so it's got a what i call a paper gasket first and then there's a metal gasket that sandwiches between the outside there's a uh, bypass valve right there the metal gasket goes in there just like that so we're going to get it stuck on there next Alright, Tucker's tapping the uh, holes out, just clean those out for the head studs. Was reading the instructions on the head studs. Looks like we're going to have to mill a notch in the uh, top of the rocker here, about 200 thousandths deep. Each one of those, I'm assuming it's for valve cover clearance for the stud and the nut since that's going to be taller. So we'll have to take all those apart. We may have to wait till tomorrow before we do that. So it's actually Sunday here right now. That's why there's nobody else here we're trying to do something nice and clean. And just everything's fighting us today, isn't it? Yeah. But projects never go easy. Now we could use the stock bolts and stuff, but just in case we get carried away with boost pressure, I don't think we're going to get near that envelope, but we're just trying to fix this motor so it is bulletproof and will last forever, so that's why we're going to throw head studs in it. It's just a safety factor on that. So did you do that one? I sure did. I did that one. Yep. Better safe than sorry, so we'll push your little lifters down. All right, head's all nice and clean and dry. Tucker's putting on the uh, valve stem seals that fit nicely now, don't they? Yeah. Well, that'd be a lot better for you on down the road. We've got a new updated style. Took us, what, about 45 minutes machine work? I mean, you could've just aluminum block. Aluminum block, not a diesel, bud. All right, we're gonna get those in there and uh, He's got all the valves cleaned up. We're putting those back in the same exact holes. The valves looked excellent. We didn't do nothing to those. You guys can see the valve seats. Everything checked out awesome on this motor for sure. It's not broke. We're not fixing it, are we? It's going to last a long time. Um, we'll get all the valves in. We'll bring you guys back. We put uh, put the new springs and stuff in. All right. So it'll, we got the 60-pound valve springs. Work. I think these are a Cummins part number they're in a marine application you guys can see 
a little bit different. They're quite a bit taller. I guess which means more seat pressure, huh? So they said not to reuse the stock retainers and stuff if you're going over, what did they say, 3,800 RPM or something, which we're not, we're going to be stopping at 3,200 or whatever, so we'll be fine with that. We're not drag racing or anything like that, so um, we start sticking those in there one by one. Got to put the super that's, valve spring compressor 9,000 on there. And, yeah, that's fun. All right, there you go. There you go, set of valve springs in. Tucker's gonna give them the bang test, make sure they're all keepered in. No, you gotta hit them. Oh, Here. actually hit them? Hold it and I'll show you how to do one. Here. Hold the head. Won't snap like that, see? I think you just did it for me. Did it for you. Make sure everything's seated good and all that stuff. I always like to do that, so. Sounds like a piano. All right, clean that head up one more time. I guess we're ready to throw the gasket and stuff on, aren't we? Yeah. We can put the uh, gasket. I think it says to put the head studs on first. I'm gonna have to read that. All right, we got a new head gasket. Oh. Got her going the right way. So that kit did say to put the head studs in first, which I'm not a huge fan of, because if they're bent or warped anyway, the uh, head does not sit on. That's fancy. It is a nice head gasket, I'll say that. So I'll leave it right there. Then we're gonna grab the head. Do you need to put anything else on it? Nope. I'm gonna put my hand somewhere else to be able to lift it that high. What's that? Because I can't lift it that high. Let me go this way. There we go. Whew. That wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it's still heavy. There she goes. My back. You like it? Yeah, that looks good. She's heavy, bud. Mm-hmm. All right, Tucker's in there. We got one of these rocker arms apart. We're just testing out tonight to make sure we can mill it. I'm gonna bring you guys in there. But what he's doing, he's milling that step in there, uh, 200 thousandths deep for the uh, studs. So we'll be ready for tomorrow. We got a small fly cutter in there. So what are you at now? 130 thousandths deep. Taking a 30 thousandths cut at a time. We're back at it. Mr. Tucker got all these dudes milled out. They're looking sharp. Got them all filed, all reassembled back together. He's been working on this. We've got uh, head studs. He's got lube underneath all of them. There's nuts and washers on there. Now he's dropping fish rods in. Lucky here, bub. Look. 
Let's pull them open on the side. Oh! oh. oh yeah. So he's putting the push rods back in the same holes. It really doesn't matter at this point because we put new lifters in, but it's a good idea to keep everything organized like he's doing. So he's going to get those on there. Then we'll set the rocker pedestals on and, uh, and go through and torque the head bolts. All right, we backed all the rockers off. Just putting the rocker arm holder bolt in. So there's a head stud that actually goes through that whole rocker stand too. So the reason we had to mill that off is that nut and washer is taller than the bolt head. When it's too tall, it will hit the little valve covers over there. So that is the reason we done that. But we did an awesome job milling them. Look factory. All right, Mr. Tucker got all those torqued down. What was it, 120 five. five foot pounds on these head studs? I think I may have told you these are the original head bolts in here. These can actually uh, stretch under pressure. These are actually one time use. I think the sock ones torque to like 88 foot pounds. Then I believe they turn 90 degrees or what they call a torque to yield, but uh, studs are a lot stronger. Did I get orange paint everywhere? Yeah, you did. So, uh, since we had this on number one top dead center, we went ahead and adjusted the valves um, in the book. We did the uh, one, so now we gotta turn the motor over and get number six on top dead center, and then we can go through and adjust the other half of the valves. It's the way most of your six cylinder motors are. Um, usually you can adjust all the valves in two rotations. I do know some of the older Mack motors, you gotta do it in three, three positions, but uh, most everything, six cylinders, you can do everything in two notches, so. We're going to rotate this over and uh, adjust the rest of them. The intakes are 10 thousandths and the exhaust are 20 thousandths. So, and then I'm going home for the day. What are you doing? I don't know. Put a few more parts on. Maybe. Intake and some stuff like that, but I'm getting tired. Me too. All right, back at it here. Tucker's been doing a few little things. Got the uh, side tappet cover on. Uh, we're still waiting on the uh, pump from Area Diesel Service. They're working on it, but we went ahead and put the injection pump gear in here. We got the timing marks lined up. He's got the front cover. We did put a new seal on it. We should still be able to line the injection pump up. So once that gear is in there, it really can't jump out of tooth or anything because it's in that uh, cover there. So you ready to cover up for the last time? Try. All right. Make sure they kill their dolphins. Killer Dow pin is secured. It's not going to go anywhere. Somebody got lucky on that one. Yeah. Then we got to kind of push that adapter off there too. Yep. There you go. Oh, buddy. We got a little bit of a mess going on here. Yeah, you're fine. Seal went on there good. Which one's the another seal installer for a double lip seal? Oh, you got a Chrysler tag on your Ford engine. I don't want that. On my Ford engine? Well, that's going to be in a Ford. Oh, All right, we're just going to keep carrying on. Um, we'll probably bring you guys back. Tucker's going to, we got to put a couple more plates on. Um, we've got a new exhaust manifold from Diesel Conversion Specialist, but uh, he's going to prep this block, get it all painted, and then we'll bring you guys back in. Alright, Mr. Tucker's been busy at work painting stuff, huh? Yeah, it's, a, it's not too bad. I kind of brushed it a little bit, but... Looks good, good, looks good. 
He's got the coming beige going on. This was a semi gloss black. Is that right? Yeah, the red would have been a little. A little he had stuff. we had red. He's gonna paint it, but he said too much red. Yeah, I didn't. So we've been putting on accessories. Some of the stuff we got from our friends at uh, Diesel Conversion Specialists. Um, they sent us a one wire alternator with a uh, tachometer output, so we can make the factory tack work. Um, we got new water pumps on there. Belt tensioner. We've got a belt ordered. They also sent a um, conversion friendly manifold. So this is going to set the turbo back away from the uh, heater and AC box in that truck. It's going to set it down here in this location so we're not uh, interfering with that. So here is the AC box and stuff. The factory turbo come on that Cummins motor would have that turbo sitting right back here. So with that manifold they sent us, it's going to drop that away from there. So hopefully that makes sense. But uh, if you guys need anything Cummins conversion parts, I highly recommend checking them out. We've used them in the past. If you've watched our videos, you've seen uh, your brother's Bronco that you drive all the time. Hey. So Hunter has a uh, 93 Ford Bronco that has a 4BT Cummins in it that we got all the stuff in about three years ago from these guys. But I've been very happy with how everything fits up. But we've got an adapter plate from them, uh, motor mounts, and all that good stuff. So they sent this turbo or this manifold, super high quality, thick, gave us all new hardware. Look at all these goodies. Nice hardware. It's got locking. See those little serrations on the back? That keeps them locked oh. from backing out. So I think you're going to put a little bit of anti-seize on those. Even sent gaskets and stuff too. So pretty high quality manifold. It actually has um, ports tapped into it for a perometer right there too. So we're going to utilize those also. But uh, yeah, definitely go check those guys out if you want to put a Cummins motor into uh, anything Ford, Chevy, stuff like that. They've got, got you guys covered for sure. All right, we got the diesel conversion specialist adapter on. That's going to adapt to our Ford ZF five-speed transmission. There is the part number for it, 1272. Comes with very nice hardware and everything. We did, per their instructions, um, grind this engine block a little bit to clearance for a uh, Ford six-liter starter. That's what a lot of these conversions use. So we've got a new six-liter starter. How do you feel about having six-liter parts in your truck? Now I feel like my head gaskets are going to blow up. So yeah, it's a six liter power stroke um, that they put uh, in the, well, in the later trucks from I think 03 to 07. They didn't have the best record ever. Perfect. Fitting good, ain't it? Perfect. So you guys notice we had all the paint. We actually put this on before paint, put a piece of tape around here and uh, taped the line off so we had bare metal so that sits up against their type. We can go ahead and put the uh, flywheel clutch and starter on there too. Inconvenient. Does this fit your transmission? You said. Yeah, it does. Very inconvenient. There. Well, it looks like it. Maybe. Yeah. Try it. Yeah, I got that one. Works fine. Pristine. Which way, does it matter which way this goes on? Nope. You got your bolts here you gotta line up with. Oh, I see. All right. 
right, all right. We got uh, your six liter starter on there. Looking good. So you guys seen us putting this flywheel, and uh, this is just a single disc clutch. This is all from South Bend. Um, I think that I'd have to look it up. That clutch is rated for somewhere in the neighborhood of 375 horse or something like that, like 800 foot pounds. I'm not exactly sure, but you need to write your part numbers down on this. Here's the uh, clutch that we're using. We actually got all this from uh, Diesel Conversion Specialties. Um, they keep all this stuff in stock, so we just got it from them. But uh, for what he's doing, we're just shooting for that 275, 300 horse goal. Nice, nice, reliable power range. So that's all we're going to do on this thing today. Um, Airy Diesel is sending us the turbo injectors, and uh, they're tweaking our injection pump for us. So you might notice we didn't put our vacuum or power steering pump on here yet. We're going to wait and get that injection pump on there to do all that. So, But we'll see you guys here in a little bit when we get that stuff. All right, we're back at it again. Area Diesel Service has uh, shipped us a whole bunch of goodies, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Including this big old turbo. Yeah, that's the best part. So these guys are awesome. They've got a video on their channel of rebuilding this pump, everything they did to it. You guys seen in the last video, we took this thing off and sent it to them. Um, they took it apart, disassembled it. I'm gonna throw a few clips in there as I'm talking, but. Uh, they did a super sweet job. They put a bigger fuel pin in it and a higher governor spring. So I don't know exact RPMs. I'd say it's probably 32 or 3300 now. It should fuel up too. Um, that fuel pin is going to give it more fuel too um, and all that stuff. So go check their video out. I'm not going to explain too much more on that pump, what all they did to it. You guys need to go watch that. It's pretty cool. Uh, they did send us a set of uh, Bosch injectors. I'm not going to give you guys the part numbers, but you can go on their channel, get all the part numbers. Uh, Kurt and the guys over there are very thorough in what they do as um, far as part numbers and all that stuff. So, got us a brand new set. I think they're 5x12s. I'm not exactly sure. You can go on their site again. They'll tell you exactly for sure on the injectors. Factory Bosch. And we got a Borg Warner uh, S300 Turbo. So, this is going to be perfect for what we're doing. Um, yeah, I don't need anything. We don't need no Monster Turbo. Now, you guys know my shop truck. We built it a few, about a year ago, year and a half ago. It's got a big turbo on it. It's awesome when it lights up, but it does not light up till probably 17, 1800. Mm -hmm. When it does, it throws you back in the it seat. Does. But uh, down below good. that, it's pretty much lazy. It's like a stock truck, but I'm still super happy with it because all I do is daily drive it. But this thing, we're looking to pull, so we're looking to build power down lower where that six cylinder is at. So, but uh, this turbo is rated at 400 horsepower. Again, he has all the specs on their video, their website, what that turbo will support. Should be a perfect match for what we're doing so i think they said this pump uh they bumped the cc's i think stock was 80 cc's and they bumped it to like 130 um which is in the 275 horse range with the bigger injectors and turbos we should be sitting somewhere around that 300 mark which 300 horsepower in a cummins is like 400 horsepower in a power stroke if you ask me so um and we also have a high volume low pressure mechanical fuel pump um, we got it in a line kit to swap it over. Originally these had a little diaphragm pump and it can be a little bit weak on getting enough fuel to it. Plus these are a lot more a lot more reliable and all that stuff. So again we're keeping it super simple. No electronics. Uh, if you watch the video they did take this. This is a fuel shut off solenoid. So originally this would require 12 volts to turn the fuel on to make the truck start up. So I believe they gutted that thing now. So this will start up and uh, we're going to shut it off mechanically right here with this little lever right there. So when you pull that back, that should shut the uh, engine off. So no electronics needed at all to run this engine. So you can have a dead battery, no alternator, park this thing on the hill, roll start it, and you're gone. So you don't need it. Your alternator dies, your battery dies on the road, you're going to keep on trucking. So very simple. That's the whole goal of this whole thing. So um, first things first, we're going to get the uh, injector stuck in there. But I highly, highly recommend you guys go check their video out. Uh, if you guys need anything... Uh, turbo diesel injectors doesn't matter if it's old or new. I know you guys see a lot of old stuff on our channels um, They got stuff for the new trucks too. So um, definitely go over and check them out Make sure you mention us you guys need anything from them. mention our name and I believe you'll get free shipping back too So and they always got some swag and stuff like that. So but that helps us out a lot that way we can keep doing stuff like this so uh, We're uh, very thankful for area diesel for helping us out on these uh, projects Look at this, this is fancy, Bob. Got to be careful with that tip. All right, we're going to get those dropped in there. 
and uh, you know torque those in first. Probably smart idea. Yep. So those got lube and everything on them already. So if you look down this hole, Tucker, you see that little dot on this side? Oh yeah. That's where that little ball is going to go. So these Cummins have a little line up. What that does, it lines up your return fuel, so your return lines all line back up first. So you got to make sure your copper O-ring stays on there. It's already on there. That's what seals up your combustion gases on there. So looks like somebody's calling me. But uh, you can get those stuck in there, and we'll get them torqued down. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Perfection. Got our fancy dancy snap on here. Yeah, snap on guy. I bought a new torque wrench. Soon enough, you're gonna have all snap on. Well, the other one got's pretty old, and I didn't like it. So, uh, Airy Diesel's video is gonna be linked down below in the description. So, if you guys wanna go watch that, I highly recommend it. Got them all torqued? Got well, one more. We got a baby extension. All right, Tucker's getting ready to grab the pump here. He's got a new gasket on the engine. Remember, they've got this thing locked in number one, top dead center. Once we get everything in there, uh, bolt torque down. I believe we got to back this uh, bolt out and we'll put this piece in there and tighten the bolt back down against it. And that will unlock that shaft. So the little key is still under here yet. When we left this motor, we put it in number one, top dead center. And so I'm gonna watch as you slide it in there, make sure the key does not drop out. My dipstick's like in the way. Is it? It is. I'm gonna have to move that first. 13 millimeter. All right, take two. Now she'll fit, huh? Oh, let me. You and that dipstick over there. Oh. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let me go that way a little. That way. That way and down. Started on here. You on the bolts? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We'll get some nuts on there to hold that and then we'll get a nut on there and torque it on. All right. So Tucker got the front bolt torqued. Um, so we've got a mark right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. That's what they call a static timing mark. We're lined up good on those. That means everything's in time. But one thing we're going to do, we're going to advance this pump. If you guys notice, there's slots in these holes right here. So we're going to rotate that pump a little bit towards the head of the engine. But uh, first thing we got to do is unlock the pump. You want to go ahead and back that screw off. You see how it come loose there? So we got to back that the rest of the way out and put this in there. All the way? Uh, a little bit more. It's probably enough. Okay. Now you can tighten that up. good so now look your pump rotates here see that mm -hmm. so we're gonna go ahead and tilt it up about an eighth inch above the other mark and go ahead and tighten that down there. it should give us a couple of degrees of time it's not much but uh, there's plenty of videos on messing with that stuff for sure so you can tighten those little 13 millimeter bolts up I'll do the hardest one first sure I'll hold it here it's gonna take forever Where's it? Are you there? Yeah, you're there. Go right. ahead and tighten it. Get your other, other ones tight. We're going to do a bunch of plumbing on lines and stuff. We get all that done. We'll bring you guys back uh -oh. in. Kevin's over painting next door, and I'm pretty sure he might like to help you put that uh, turbo on. What do you think? Probably. I need to get the sock out of here, though. Oh, it's not going to stay on there forever? We got a jeep. Honestly, might just leave it on there for easy access next time. All right, we'll be back. Where have you been? Is that what your turbo is going to sound like? <laughs> not my turbo. Well, boys, we got big problems here. Uh oh. The turbo is not going to fit. Uh oh. Yep. Did you Luke, know this, Tucker? Does the engine not? It won't fit. Oh boy. It won't fit. Well, let's just go back to stock. <laughs> All right, the turbo is not going to fit because of this engine stand. I had y'all worried, didn't I? I thought we were going back to stock. Stock. I'm ready to be disappointed. Little two millimeter turbo. No. So uh, I think we, we got to put injector lines on, do some other things. We're probably going to have to put that on in the next video when it gets dropped in the truck, ain't we? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What, the yeah, I know it's a sad day, but. Yeah, that's the best part. Well, yeah, I'm gonna go find something else. <laughs> Might as well start crying. So, uh, while you guys are gone, we got uh, all the return lines on going in here. This dumps into the tank. The other return line comes off the injection pump over here. Um, feed from the tank is going to go in here. This is a lift pump, it has a primer pump in it too. Sends fuel up into this fuel filter. We've got a bleeder right here. Then the pressurized fuel goes into the pump here. When I say pressurized, it's like 10, 15 PSI from this pump. Then the injection pump does its magic, sends the uh, high pressure fuel out to the injector. So this little line we put on here is actually the boost line. So when this builds boost, pushes down the diaphragm, which in turn tells the pump to send more fuel to your injectors. So I think you can go guys go look in their videos. I think the pump set up somewhere around 25 psi of max fuel it quits putting out so any more boost past that it's not going to put any more fuel out and i believe the turbo is waste gated at the same amount so 25 ish psi it's going to kick off and uh not build any more boost which i don't think you need that for a tow rig at all so you know my truck i keep it number one all the time it builds 25 26 psi number one which is pretty wicked right but we know what happens when we turn it number six right it gets up like over Smiles. 50 pounds that's, of boost and starts blowing blow off boost lines. Yeah. We don't want that. Mm, it's not reliable. Like. That's what you like, you know? <laughs> All right, we putting injection lines on. Then what else? I clean that one. Oh, you're not done yet? No. Oh. That one's going to rust out. Oh, boy. What do we have here, Mr. Kevin? I don't know. I'm not a diesel guy. It's a vacuum pump. Do we know why diesels don't make vacuum? Because they don't have no butterfly valve. To... Uh, They're just full bore. Huh. So vacuum pump goes on here, then the power steering pump goes on the back of it. You like that? You probably need to pull this part off because, uh, yeah, that's going to work better. There. Yeah. Got a new gasket? It's kind of oily. So there's an oil feed line that goes in right there. And we probably need the fitting out of the old one. Oh, no, that's Air Diesel sent us oh. extra. Uh, Tucker, where is your old vacuum pump? Oh, it's right here. I see the fitting. Right here. Oh. What are you doing? A tea bottle. Look at this big old mess. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this mount, too. We need. Oh, look at that fitting. You got this one? Mm. Yeah, we got that one. Okay, just this one. That one and this piece. Tucker's getting nuts and brackets off the old pump. Kevin's putting the oil fitting in the vacuum pump. I've got some bolts for the vacuum pump, maybe. Times two. You ready? I got a gasket up here, too. Super awesome gasket? Super awesome gasket. Your little magic finger and stick it in there. What do we got down here? Doki. You don't even have to torque this. Nope. Click, click. Put a little oil feed line on here. We're about ready for the power steering pump, bud. How are we doing here, boys and girls? Hi. Oh, wow. So, I'm a bad influence, so. Tucker got his little, we got a, uh, what do you call that? Stiffener bracket? Bracket. Bracket. Sure. So, <laughs> the back of the pump has a bracket that keeps it from breaking off, and the power steering pump, too. What's this go to? What's that go to? Don't worry about it. That's going to hold your throttle bracket or something later, so your throttle from your gas pedal's got to go there. You got to screw that in more. The idle? Yeah. This is the one back here that... Oh. It's pretty much out of threads, too. I think they got her maxed. So, uh, I think that's going to be a wrap. Too bad we couldn't put the turbo on today. That's going to be in the next video or so. 
for sure. So, uh, what's the next video going to be? Start about putting mudder or putting mudder and chalk. Super sweet burnout. Well, that's not how that. this works. We got to put a four wheel drive axle and stuff in this truck behind us. A little sneak peek. Might already be done, but we don't know that. So make sure you subscribe. We got a couple more videos coming up of working on this truck behind us. Um, we converted it to four wheel drive, but uh, this is gonna be pretty epic when it drops in. Um, yeah, we're, I guess, about ready to drop it in, aren't we? Yeah, don't, don't mind. Oh, your paint coming off your plastic tube? See, you got a blow by tube, it needs to go in here too. Kevin's special right here, the little drip. Kevin's signature, you can sign it. So yeah, the a uh, couple more videos on this truck coming out. We're gonna be yanking the motor out of it behind here. Had a power stroke in it, we're yanking it out. We're gonna four-wheel drive it. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see all that. And then we're gonna be dropping this thing in that truck and hopefully you can hear it run. So let me put this on too. You keep interrupting my closer video here, bud. Put what on? Fine. You're real good at that. Your turbo, we can't put your turbo drain on until we get a turbo in it. It's all because of the motor mount. It's all because of that motor mount bracket you welded up wrong. Hey, it looks good. So yeah, that's going to be a wrap on this one. Um, stay tuned for more. It's going to be pretty epic. We do appreciate everybody watching. We appreciate area diesel service and uh, diesel conversion specialist. Make sure you go over and uh, knock on those guys' doors. Tell them, uh, tell them that we sent you over there. Make sure you watch their videos. Make sure to be super creepy when you do super it. Super creepy. Tell them you're one of the creepy CNC equipment viewers. For sure. <laughs> I highly recommend going over and checking out that pump video and seeing how it works. All the numbers, horsepower stuff on the turbos and all that stuff. So, Kurt and the guys, that's all they do. And it's uh, pretty cool stuff for sure. So. But yeah, we appreciate everybody watching, and uh, make sure you go down below and hit that thumbs up button, drop some comments. Um, we truly appreciate everybody watching our videos because it lets us do stuff like this for sure. Mm -hmm. Have fun. If it wasn't for them guys, we couldn't do it. And there might be a big old steel box in the background. I wonder what that goes on. It's a shelter house. It's a shelter house. It goes on a big army truck. I'm going to give you a hint. Place. There's a video coming on that build too, so make sure you subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.